Hey there! Today we are cooking with ground meat, carrots, cauliflower, bell peppers, aromatic vegetables, buns, and a whole lot of condiments. On this episode of What Do You Make of This? I'm going to show you how to make the American classic, Sloppy Joes. Sloppy Joes are a true American classic. This simple sandwich has been around for almost 100 years, and it is such a crowd pleaser. Popular with children, popular with adults, very commonly, home cooks make this sandwich using either a powdered sauce mix or else a canned sauce. There's actually a better way to do it from scratch, and what I love about the scratch method is it's not only easy, you can also really customize it to make it your own recipe. I'm going to show you how. So the first thing I want to start with is the bun for the sandwich. I'm using pretzel buns today just because they're a little fun, they're a little different, and they've got a really great chewy texture. You can use whatever bun you like though. I'm just going to start by cutting this bun in half and getting it in the toaster oven. So if you need a good tip for cutting buns in half, you wanna set it on its side um, perpendicular to you. And you just wanna make sure your knife is pretty well straight and even, but instead of going straight through, go about a quarter of the way and twist and twist and twist. And once you've gone all the way around, you get a nice evenly split bun. Great tip. I'm gonna just get that knife out of the way. Okay, so do not skip toasting the bun, especially for this sandwich. If you try to put a very saucy meat onto um, an, an untoasted bun, it's going to get really soggy and it's going to fall apart on you. Toasting it kind of gives it a little extra armor so it can absorb that sauce. And this way it holds together from the first bite to the very last. So into the toaster, this is going to go. And once it's done, it's just going to sit in the toaster oven until I am ready to plate it. So it doesn't have to be warm, it just has to be toasted. Okay, that's good to go. So next thing I want to work on is the bell pepper for this. So before I start chopping, quick note on vegetables here. Very traditionally in Sloppy Joe's, you have bell pepper, onion, and garlic, and those are your big flavor bases for the sauce. Because it's such a, a loose um, vegetable heavy sauce, I'm always one for having vegetables wherever I can get them into my dish, especially if I can sneak them in. Not just for kids, but I think even we as adults sometimes find we don't eat as many vegetables as we should. The more places you can get them in there, the easier it is to eat, get your vegetables every day. So I'm also going to be doing some carrots and some riced cauliflower. You can adjust that depending on what you like, but these three here are the big ones. Do not skip those. Okay, so first things first, bell pepper. Great way to open a bell pepper is just to push the top through with your thumb. There we go. It's kind of soft, but it will make it easier to get the seeds out as soon as you've cut it in half. So I'm not even entirely sure I want to use this whole bell pepper. So I'm going to start by opening it up and just getting the insides out. I'm going to do that over my garbage bowl in the sink here. You want to try to get as much of the white rib out as possible too. That part can be a little bit bitter and a little bit funny tasting. So I'm just going to peel that out. So for the bell pepper, I really like everything to be very, very finely chopped. I'm actually going to be shredding most of these things, but shredding bell pepper never quite works out for me. So this I'm chopping finely. I think actually I'm only going to use half of it. So I'm going to just take that other half, get it off to the side. I'll use it in a salad or something another day. And I'm going to start, got bell pepper stuck to my fingers by doing some very, very thin slices. And when you're slicing a bell pepper, you do want the skin side to be down because this is very slippery and that is just a kitchen accident waiting to happen. Flip it the other way, your knife can actually grip into that flesh a lot better. And that allows you to make some really good, nice thin strips. And because I'm going to dice this as finely as possible, I want these strips to be about as thin as I can reasonably make them without wasting too much time. I wanna eat now. Okay, that guy's actually, nope, there's two of them. Okay, so now that I've got my really nice thin strips, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and just turn these strips into a very, very, very finely diced bit of bell pepper. Get my little uh, knife rest off to the side there. Okay, that looks better. So run my knife through this and even after this initial dice, I'm going to go through several more times just to make sure it's really, really fine. I find most of these vegetables will break down while they're cooking, but the bell peppers tend to hold their shape pretty well. So for that reason, I want to have it as fine as possible so that you're not eating a bell pepper sandwich. That's good, that's another episode, but this is a sloppy joe. 
where the ground meat is really the star. So I'm just going to try to keep everything into a really close pile, run my knife through a few more times. Don't let any bell peppers escape. We're not using a lot of it, so every bit that you have is important. <laughs> this is probably going to be about half a cup of every vegetable by the time I'm done preparing, and that's going to make enough to make four very generous Sloppy Joe sandwiches. There we go. So if you've never had a Sloppy Joe before, it's basically ground meat held together in almost a sweet and sour tomato sauce. And the sauce that I'm going to show you how to make uses a lot of very, very, very common pantry condiments. So it's very approachable, very easy to find everything that you're going to need for this today. There we go. Okay, so that is some very, very, very finely chopped bell pepper. About as close to invisible bell peppers as I think we're going to get for this meal, especially once they have a chance to soften up. All right, so let me rake those up, collect any bell peppers that have tried to escape. There we go. And I'm just going to get that into a bowl very carefully and off to the side. Okay. Make sure there's no bell peppers missing here. Scrape with the back of your knife, by the way, when you're cleaning your hands. <laughs> okay, that'll go off to the side. Let me just dry off. There we go. Okay. So for, let's do the garlic next. The garlic, I've got a whole head here. Don't use a whole head of garlic or you're going to be eating a garlic sandwich. Um, I'm just going to pull off maybe two or three cloves. Really cook with your heart with this one. If you like a lot of garlic, use three. If you don't really like garlic so much, use two, use one. If you can help it though, don't leave it out because it really does add a very distinct flavor to this. But if you truly, truly, truly hate garlic, I'm not gonna know if you leave it out. It's okay, your secret is safe. I'm going to do two cloves because they're pretty good sized and I'm just going to get the rest off, back on top there. Okay, so to get the skin off of an, uh, not an onion, off of a garlic, you are going to snip the ends off like that. Get those woody ends out of the way and then making sure it's on the flattest part possible, lie the flat end of your knife on it and just give it a smash. And then the skin will loosen and you'll get the whole garlic clove out. Same thing with the other one. So I could very finely mince this garlic, but it's honestly a little bit time consuming for this and I have a faster way that's going to make sure it really just blends invisibly into the sauce. So if you have a very fine microplane grater, you could try to do this on a cheese grater, but you're, it's gonna be a little bit harder because it's such a tiny thing. Take your grater and just run the garlic clove right through the grater. Or if you have a garlic press, that's great too. Um, I think I've mentioned before though, I'm not a big fan of kitchen utensils that only have one purpose, and that is definitely one purpose, versus I can use this microplane for just about anything. Be careful you don't grate your fingers at this last part. Let's see if I can get a few more out of there. This one's pretty gentle on fingers, so I can usually get in there a little bit better, but be careful with yours until you know it. Okay, and then on the back here, you're gonna see a lot of very, very, very finely grated garlic. I'm just gonna set that extra little bit off to the side. I will run my knife through that, but um, at least here, we're gonna have some really nice fine pieces to really melt down into that sauce. All right, this guy kind of fell apart while I, when I smashed it. That's okay though, because I'm still getting really the insides out and what is left is just kind of that membrane that holds the garlic together. Let me see here, you know? I might even just leave these little membranes aside and not even bother cooking with them. Because like I said, I, I don't wanna stand here very finely chopping lots of garlic. I want it to be a super, super fine grate. Yeah, you know what, that's gonna be enough. That's probably a very generous teaspoon of grated garlic and because it's grated, it's going to be very, very strong. I'm just going to try to scrape off this grater and get as much garlic off as possible. There we go. And this little bit, I'm just going to throw off into the garlic, uh, into the garbage bowl. If however, you do like a lot of garlic flavor, by all means, chop it up, use it. Waste not, want not. Okay. And once again, I'm just going to dry my hands off before we move on to the next thing. Okay. So this little bit of garlic, let me rake it up and get that into a bowl. Okay. So same thing we did with the garlic we're also going to do with the onion. I'm going to grate it up. So if you've never grated onion, it is a huge time saver. Might also make you cry though. I'm only using a very small onion because as with everything here, um, I'm just going to be using about a half of a cup. 
except the garlic. Don't use a half a cup of garlic, um, but half a cup of the onion. So, woo, caught it. <laughs> to do this, I'm just going to start by snipping off the leafy end. And I do want to try to keep this whole. So I'm just going to try to do a slit through just that first layer of skin. Pardon me while I try to peel this over my bowl so we don't have skins flying everywhere. And if you're in doubt, always remove an extra layer of onion skin because there's always just that little piece you think is going to be fine and ends up being very papery while you're eating. So I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'll say it a million times, always err on the side of caution with onions. More skin removed is better than less skin removed. Okay, so I'm just going to now take a box grater right down here in the middle and I'm just going to start grating just like that. Rotate it every few swipes, and that's just going to make sure it grates very evenly and very quickly. Got a little piece of onion skin there. Don't want that in the dinner. And this, like I said, is so much faster than trying to do a very fine mince. And you're going to get almost a liquefied onion, which in this case is a good thing because it just disappears into the sauce. But it's a little bit better than just using like an onion powder because it does have a really nice fresh flavor to it. Another skin. I thought I got them all. I'm glad they're popping off there. And as with the garlic, you will see that kind of what's left here is that outer layer of onion skin. That's okay. Don't try to salvage that. Don't cut your fingers. It's not worth it. Once you get down to that root and that little outer layer of skin, it's done into the garbage bowl. So there is a, so here we go. You can see just how very, very fine this onion is. It's almost like a paste. And that for this sandwich is going to be a great thing. This is great to do with um, hamburgers too, if you're ever making them, because you can really work it into the meat without having chunks of onion as you're eating. Make sure too, you scrape the inside of your grater because there's a lot of onion that's hiding in there. Okay, this grater has served its purpose. I'm going to get it into the sink. Once again, wipe my hands off. This is a little bit of messy prep work, but it is worth it in the end because it tastes so good. Okay, and then there's my bowl. I'm just going to rake this up. Man, more skin! You think you get it all and it just magically appears. Watch out for that. Onion skin is sneaky. Okay, and I'm just going to try to get, yes, one shot. Look at that. All of that onion. So there is a lot of onion juice too. If you can save it, try to, because again, there's a lot of really good flavor in there and that is going to flavor your sauce very nicely. Really should have waited to dry off my hands because now I have to do it again. Oh well, okay, I'm going to get that right up front there. And I still need my knife. Had to think about what I needed next. So at this point, the prep work is pretty much done. What I have for my sloppy joes, like I said, I'd like to try to get some extra vegetables in there wherever I can. So I bought riced cauliflower at the grocery store. This is becoming very, very easy to find in most grocery stores. It's really just very finely chopped up cauliflower that you don't have to deal with. If you can't find riced cauliflower, however, um, you can absolutely take a head of cauliflower, chop it very finely. If you have a food processor, great, throw it in the food processor. You might even be able to run it through the grater. I've never actually tried, but if I'm thinking about it in practice, I think it would work. So give it a shot, play with it. You just want very, very, very fine pieces of cauliflower. This will break down a lot easier than the bell pepper though. So don't panic if it's in big chunks, it'll crumble up as it cooks. The other thing I'm going to be putting is some carrot. So again, I took some help from the grocery store. I bought some shredded carrots, but these are pretty big and they're not going to break down very well as they cook. So I'm actually going to, I did the shredded carrots just as a little bit of a shortcut because I don't have to peel. I don't have to chop too much. I'm going to just rake it into a pile and just like we did with the bell pepper, I am just going to run my knife through it and try to turn these teeny tiny carrot sticks into teeny tiny carrot cubes. So, try not to chop off a finger while I'm doing this. Pardon me while I'm just focusing and looking down. I've got little bits of carrot trying to run everywhere. There we go. And then one more time, I'm just going to rake it back into a pile and go again, just in case there were any bits of carrot that were facing the wrong way. So if you get a couple of long pieces of carrot, it's not the end of the world. Um, carrots are pretty delicious on their own. I just want to make sure they're finely chopped. So this isn't just, by the way, to sneak vegetables into food. This is going to add a lot of extra flavor um, and you can really play around with it. So if you know, you've know you got a lot of zucchini, chop up some zucchini and throw it in there. If you've got 
some green vegetables like spinach or kale, chop it very fine so that it doesn't overwhelm the sauce. You really do want the meat to be the star of the show, but um, you know, if it's in there, it just adds extra flavor, adds extra nutrition, nothing wrong with that. Okay, so here, with just a few quick passes of my knife now, I have got some very fine pieces of carrot, about the same size as the riced cauliflower. I'll get that back into the bowl. See if I can do it without these little pieces just escaping everywhere. It's like confetti. Basically just throwing a sloppy joe party in here. You could throw this up into the air and shout surprise. Don't do that, that's a huge mess. Unless you've got somebody else to clean it up, then hey, it's your kitchen, go for it. Okay, so last little bit of carrot there. Throw those in too. So again, we've got about half a cup of carrot, half a cup of cauliflower, half a cup of onion, half a cup of bell pepper. That is going to be what's going into our sloppy joe sauce. I'm going to show you how to cook it next. Okay, so it is time to get cooking. I have got a good, hot, heavy skillet for this because we're going to be browning about a pound of ground meat. So to the skillet, I'm just going to drizzle in some olive oil. You can use any kind of oil or butter you like. I don't wanna use a lot because there's already, I'm using ground beef, there's already some fat in that, but because we're sauteing some other things too, you just wanna make sure that you have enough um, fat in the pan to cook. I'm just going to get that oil out of the way so I don't send it flying while we're cooking. And I'm just gonna give this a second to make sure the oil is really nice and hot. So what you're looking for is just for the oil to kind of start to ripple and move a little bit in the pan. You might even start to see a little bit of smoke because this is some high heat. That's a good thing right now. So to this hot, hot pan, I'm going to very carefully add in a pound of ground protein. You can use whatever kind of ground protein you like. I am using ground beef because it's very traditional with this. I will get that pan out of the way. And I'm just going to try to break apart this meat a little bit. Just to get it a little more flat in the pan. I had it packed on there so tight in that plate. I've got to break it down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so break it down a little bit flatter, like so. And while it's starting to cook on one side, we're going to add a few other things to it. So I'm gonna put that down. First thing that's going in is salt, and you want quite a lot of salt for this because um, it's just really, honestly, it is the flavor base for sloppy joe. So I'm going to go in with about a teaspoon of salt. You can certainly start with half a teaspoon and add more near the end if you need it. But I'm being generous with it. Also some pepper. So I personally like a lot of pepper in mine. I'm going to be using about a half a teaspoon. You can certainly use less. Um, it's not a very spicy dish, so I do like to try to use some extra seasonings where I can. So in with that pepper. And then um, kind of the, the thing that makes a sloppy joe is Worcestershire sauce. I'm going to use very generously about a tablespoon of this. Now, if you can't find Worcestershire sauce, your next best bet is going to be soy sauce because it's also got that same really good um, salty, very savory flavor, and that's what you want. Also, um, if you are vegetarian or vegan, this does actually contain a little bit of anchovies, so it's not technically vegetarian. So if you're doing this with like a plant-based protein um, or even just crumbled tofu, absolutely use soy sauce as a great alternative. You'll get a very similar flavor profile out of it. Okay, so now I'm going to keep working this meat down a little bit. And a good secret for browning ground meat is that you actually don't wanna move it around too much right away because that allows the meat to caramelize on the bottom before you start flipping it and doing it again. Treat it like you would any other meat that's going into a pan. I think very often as we're making ground meat, um, as you're browning it, it's, it's very tempting to just keep it moving like it's going to catch on fire or something. It won't. <laughs> it's actually a good thing to just kind of let it hang out. You know, think of it more like a hamburger. You're not going to flip a hamburger over every 15 seconds. Don't do that to your meat either. Give it a chance to really get some good color. So I do want to move it around as I'm finishing saying that. Um, <laughs> I just want to make sure that the Worcestershire sauce that I poured in there has a chance to really cover a lot of the meat and doesn't start sticking to the bottom of the pan. Okay, so to that meat, while it is all cooking on that first side, I am going to go in with the garlic that we grated earlier. Come on, garlic. Okay, I'm going to use my hands to get the garlic out of the bowl. And same thing with that grated onion. So this, like I said, is going to really melt in there um, and kind of become one with the meat as it cooks. That is a good thing. So I'm just going to actually get it kind of spread out and you can see how very fine it is. There's maybe a couple of little chunks of onion in there from the grating process, but overall it's a really nice smooth paste. 
And now I can start really mixing and working it into this meat. Okay, so sloppy joes, like I had mentioned, they're not a spicy dish by nature, but if you do like um, a really spicy sandwich, you can certainly add in at this stage some chili flakes or um, some kind of hot sauce that you like. Sriracha would actually be really good in this because it has a very similar flavor profile to the um, sauce that we're going to be making. So if you've got sriracha, you like it spicy, pour it in by all means. Um, but if you don't like it spicy, that's okay because traditionally it's not. So it's, it's more of a sweet and sour kind of sauce that we make. So I'm just going to keep working away at this meat until it is nice and beautiful and golden brown and cooked evenly through. And that's just gonna be ready when the meat is. Okay, so this meat is looking really good. It's got a nice brown color. You can even see a few spots are starting to get almost kind of a crispy brown outer edge and that's going to be a lot of great flavor into these sandwiches. So next thing I'm going to do is move the meat to the side. So you do see a lot of that oil and fat that I had talked about, we're going to be using that to our power right now because the next thing I'm going to do is add in these vegetables. So first one that's going in is the bell pepper. Let me just scrape all that out. Again, no bell pepper left behind for this meal. Okay. I'm just going to move that around just a little bit, just to evenly distribute it right in the center. And basically what we're going to do is just kind of fry it in these juices right in the middle of the pan. So bell pepper is going in and any other optional vegetables you want to try to sneak into your sloppy joes. So these are going to be the cauliflower that it was um, shredded up as well as the carrot. Like so. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of move it around, mix it up, get it into a very similar kind of jumble so that it's evenly distributed. And basically what I'm going to do is just treat it like I did with the ground meat. And I'm just going to move it around, let it caramelize a little bit, but once it's looking really nice and soft and cooked through, we'll be ready to turn this um, filling into a sauce. So just like that. And then I'm just going to let it hang out and do its thing for a few minutes. Okay, so these vegetables have had some time to cook. They're starting to look really nice and soft. You just wanna make sure that they have a chance to soften before you start building the sauce because from that point on, dinner is going to be ready very quickly. So make sure everything is really well cooked like it is here. I've seen, the, basically what I'm looking for is for the bell peppers to get really nice and soft. Those take the longest to cook. And once those are starting to just be um, a little bit more of a muted green color and not such a bright green color, that's when you know that it's going to be soft enough to go into the sandwich. So everything is now going to jumble together. And like I said, um, you know, yes, you're sneaking in some extra vegetables into this dish, but I'm not necessarily doing it to be very sneaky sneaky when I cut it very small. It's because you really want the meat to be the star of this show. And if you have big chunks of vegetables, it kind of feels more like you're eating a, a sauteed vegetable sandwich, which again, it's good, but it's not a sloppy joe and we're making sloppy joes here. So let the meat sing. Everything else is going to be really finely chopped so that it's, it has a chance to really cook down um, and really hides behind the meat. And that's what I'm looking to accomplish here. So I'm just going to give this another good mix to make sure everything is evenly distributed. You don't want to bite into the sandwich and get like a mouthful of carrot and nothing else. You do want it to have a little bit of everything. Okay, so that looks good. So it's time to start building the sauce for this. So the first thing, I just wanna break up a really big piece of meat that just caught my eye. Okay, <laughs> that was distracting. Okay, so the first thing that's going in here, and this is kind of the, the main ingredient for Sloppy Joe's is straight up ketchup. Just whatever ketchup you have at home, whatever ketchup you like is the correct answer. This is three quarters of a cup of ketchup, and that is all going straight into the pan. I have tried other methods and other recipes that call for tomato sauce and tomato paste. And honestly, it's not as good in my opinion. You can't beat the classic and the classic uses ketchup. And what goes well with ketchup, but mustard. So into this pan is going a full tablespoon of plain old yellow mustard. Again, I have seen other recipes try to get fancy. I don't like it as much as the original classic version, yellow mustard, plain ketchup, in my opinion, is the way to go. You can certainly feel free to experiment. You may feel differently, but I have made many a sloppy joe. I'm just not going to try to mess with something that's about 100 years old. The chefs know what they're doing. So I'm going to just kind of mix that around a little bit. I also got some ketchup on my fingers, so let me just dry off a little bit. There we go. Okay, so evenly spread that around. 
just like that. I'm going to get this rubber spatula out of the way. I just used it to make sure I didn't leave any ketchup behind. Okay, and the final thing that's going to be going in is brown sugar. So you do want to add a little extra sugar. Your ketchup will already have sugar in it. So I'm going to be doing a tablespoon of sugar. I know what brand of ketchup I like. I know how much sugar I need, but if you are uncertain, honestly, start with a teaspoon and add it in a teaspoon at a time. At this point, everything is cooked. So you are welcome to taste and adjust your seasonings as you need to. Start with less. You can always add more. You cannot take it back out again. But for me, that full tablespoon is going in. And I'm just going to, once again, start mixing this around. So now what we're looking for is to get this really, really well combined so that everything is now the exact same color. It is the same through and through. And I do have off to the side here, just some water. It's, a, it's kind of a, a preference whether you like a really, really, really runny sauce or whether you like it to be a little more tight. You do want it to be saucy though. So as things are cooking, if it starts to look a little too dry, you can certainly add a little, like a tiny bit of water, maybe a tablespoon at a time until it's the consistency that you are looking for. Um, but so far, this is actually looking really good. Every time I add the ketchup, I think it's not going to be quite enough, but as it cooks and kind of starts to, to melt down a little bit, it always surprises me and ends up making a really nice sauce. And if you could smell this right now, it smells like sloppy joes. I mean, it's just such a, a famous smell. The second you smell it, you, like anybody who ever ate them as a kid in the lunchroom at school is like, yep, that is sloppy joes for sure. It just is something magical about that combination of all of those condiments. That's what makes a sloppy joe a sloppy joe. So, and it's called a sloppy joe, by the way, because it's a mess to eat. It is a delicious mess. By no means is this a fancy meal. There is no bones about it. This is a just a fun, messy, get in there and enjoy it kind of meal. There's no easy, polite way to eat a sloppy joe. Um, so really that gives you too some really casual options for just things to serve it with. I like to just do whatever kind of chip I like. And even, you know, if you're making this a fun meal for your family, bring in a bunch of different chips. Let everybody have their favorite chip to go with dinner that night. Why not? It's a fun thing. It's, it's such a childhood favorite. It's kind of just a great chance to get in touch with your inner child for this dinner. Have some fun with it. And now that this sauce has pretty well come together, I'm just going to go in with a little bit more pepper. I'm not going to do any more salt though, because there was already a lot of salt um, in the mustard as well as the ketchup. And like I said, give it a taste. And if you want a little bit more of any seasonings, go for it. If you feel like you like it a little bit spicier, again, you can layer in a little bit more hot sauce or something like that, if that's what you want to do. I'm going to leave it very traditional though. I usually like my food spicy, but again, I just, I don't mess with the sloppy joe. It is what it is. You can't mess with perfection. Well, I guess I messed with it a little bit when I put some vegetables in, but I think that is the one thing that adds to it because you just get a little more extra flavor. It's also a great way to stretch a pound of meat. Okay, so this is looking perfect. You can see um, if you scrape a hole in the center, it takes a little while for the juices and the sauce to kind of come forward again, but it's also not super dry. So this is exactly the texture that I'm looking for, where you can tell it's really wet, but it's also not so runny that you get soup in the middle of your pan. That is exactly the perfect texture that you're looking for. Just enough liquid that it's going to absorb into the bun, but not so much that you're eating a soup sandwich. So I'm going to just spread that nice and flat Give it just another minute to kind of let some of the sauce cook and caramelize on the bottom just for some extra flavor. But once that's had a chance to go for about a minute tops, I'm going to get everything cleaned up and I'll show you how to put it together into a sloppy joe sandwich. Okay, so it is almost time to eat. I've let this sloppy joe mix just sit for a minute or two now that it's nice and cooked. Um, because there's so much fat in this sauce, it's a good thing to let it sit because what that's going to do is the fat's going to solidify just ever so slightly and that will make for a little bit thicker of a sauce as you're eating it. It's a sloppy joe, it's going to be messy, but you know, it's a little bit of extra help here. So let me just give it another good mix and that just looks fantastic. It's, to me, just the right consistency of still messy, still loose, but it's also not super runny. And that's really what you're looking for when you just give it that extra minute to cook, as well as just letting it sit for one extra, extra minute. Okay, so it's time to get this plated. So we have this nice toasty bun here. I'm just going to go right in the middle of my plate. And again, I cannot stress this enough, toast your buns for this sandwich. You will ruin your sandwich if you don't do that. And then I am just going to go in with a spoonful or two of filling 
And again, it's a sloppy joe. It's going to go everywhere while you're building your sandwich. That's the beauty of this dish. It's very casual. Even a lot of fun to have with company though. You know, it's, it's kind of a party plate. So how much to fill your sandwiches is a matter of preference. I would never dream of telling you how much filling to put into your sloppy joes. So when it feels right, that's the right amount of filling. We'll just actually, I'm gonna leave the lid off because what I've also got here is just a mixed green salad. I think it's a nice thing to go on the side. It brightens it up a little bit. Sloppy joes are delicious. Sloppy joes are filling. They can also be kind of heavy. So something like just a light salad or a, a lightly steamed vegetable that you like is perfect to go alongside this. Get over here, spinach leaf. Got some of those extra shredded carrots too that I mixed in there. And then, like I said, whatever kind of chip you like best is great to go on the side for a little extra crunch with this meal because it is a delicious sandwich, but a sloppy joe is a very soft sandwich. So definitely I would recommend something crunchy to go alongside it, even if it's just, you know, carrots or some sort of a dippable vegetable if you don't wanna have something like chips, but give it a little extra crunch. You will thank me because then you'll have a little more action going on on your plate. I'm gonna just arrange it like so. There we go. So we've got this sloppy joe in the center, like the king of the plate that it is. I'm gonna just go right on top. Maybe kind of a fun little angle, like a, a fashion accessory, a fancy hat with that bun. And here we have got a beautiful sloppy joe. And let me tell you, it is looking fantastic. Dinner is served. And here we have the great American classic, sloppy joes. As always, this recipe can be found in the description below. Please like and subscribe for more videos. I'm Jessica. Thanks for watching.